Hello, you welcome to our chemistry class and in chemistry we shall be looking at the topic Enthalpy. This goes along with other topics such as entropy and gives free energy. So first we need to understand that during the course of any chemical reaction, energy is either given out or taken from the surrounding. Now the energy is given off meaning that there is enough energy in the system to bring about the chemical reaction. Or energy can be taken from the surrounding, meaning that there is no enough energy in the system and later had to take some energy from the surrounding in order to carry out the reaction. A chemical reaction in which energy is given out to the surrounding is known as an exothermic reaction. While that in which energy is taken or absorbed from the surrounding is known as an endothermic reaction. So with all this, the total amount of heat contained or involved in a chemical reaction is known as enthalpy. So we define enthalpy as the totality of the heat energy that is involved in a reaction. And this heat energy is measured in joules or in kilojoules. Now we are saying that we have the reactants and we have the products. Here is the reactant and here, here are the reactants and here are the products. When the heat of the reactant is capable of carrying out the chemical reaction, now when the heat that is inside the reactant is sufficient to make the reaction occur, we we'll then say that the heat of the reactant is greater than the heat of the product. So in this case, there is a change in temperature. We have an initial temperature at the reactant side and we have a final temperature at the product side. The reactant has its own heat while the product has its own heat which in most cases are different. And so we will say that there is a change in heat which is equal to heat of the product minus heat of the reactant. Now at several cases we may have higher heat at the product side than the reactant side. And where that happens we call that an endothermic reaction. So in this case, that means we'll have a positive delta H. But if the heat of the reactant is more than the heat of the product, then the delta H will be a negative. Now, this is can be shown from the energy profile for an endothermic re reaction. So this is the energy profile of for an endothermic reaction. And from this diagram, we have here that the heat of the reactant is lesser because it is lower than the heat of the product when it is traced over here. So product is higher than the reactant. Hence, delta H is positive. And what does this actually mean? It means that this reaction to occur, it has to absorb energy from the surrounding for it to occur. And when we look at this, we have the exothermic reaction. In this exothermic reaction, we have that the heat of the reactant is higher than the heat of the product at the end of the day, meaning that the reactant had enough energy to drive the reaction and to have the product. Hence, the delta H, which is the heat of the product minus the heat of the reactant, and that gives us a negative value. When we are calculating enthalpy, there are several formulas which we use for it. Number one, we could use the expression that enthalpy equal to U plus PV where this represents enthalpy and this represents internal energy. Here is the pressure and here we have the volume. And so this is one of the expressions for calculating enthalpy. We could have change in enthalpy equal to change in internal heat energy plus pressure times change in volume. And here is another formula which we use for calculating enthalpy. Change in enthalpy equal to change in internal energy plus change in delta nRT. N stands for number of moles, R is a constant and T is temperature. And the constant R is mostly 8.314. So this is actually gotten from being equated to this, that is P equal to nRT. Another formula which we use for calculating enthalpy is delta H equal to delta G plus T delta S. Where delta H is a change in enthalpy, this is change in Gibbs energy, and this is T 
temperature multiplied by change in entropy. We have several enthalpy changes that are encountered in a reaction, such as enthalpy of combustion, enthalpy of neutralization, enthalpy of formation, enthalpy of fusion, enthalpy of vaporization, hydrogenation, and so on. We shall come across these various enthalpy changes when we, are, when we solve questions. And one more formula which we will need to make use of when we are dealing with heat of reaction is that quantity of reaction equal to mc change in temperature where m is the mass of a body here is the specific heat capacity and here is the change in temperature and q represents the quantity of heat whether lost or gained so all these formulas are going to be necessary in calculating enthalpy all right so let's take this first question the heat of fusion of sulfur is 64.4 kilojoule per mole calculate the quantity of heat required to fuse a four moles of solid sulfur b two grams of solid sulfur and c determine the mass of sulfur that would require 32 kilojoule of heat for fusion here we have that sulfur was fused meaning that it was originally solid and then it was changed into liquid this is an example of enthalpy of fusion and we are told that the delta h the standard and we are told that the standard enthalpy of fusion is plus 64.4 kilojoule per mole and here is an endothermic reaction from this we have that one mole of sulfur which has a mass of 32 gram requires 64.4 kJ per mole of energy to fuse it or of heat to fuse it hence if you have four moles of solid sulfur if you have four moles of sulfur how many kilojoules of heat will be required in fusing it all we need to do is we cross multiply that is 4 multiplies 64.4 as 4 multiplied by 64.4 equal to x times 1 which is x so x equal to 257.6 kilojoule per mole so here is the heat required number two says that what is the heat required to fuse two grams of solid sulfur for this we will relate 32 gram which is the which is equal to the standard enthalpy of fusion that's kilojoule per mole Hence, if you have 2 gram, how many kilojoules per mole will be needed to fuse it? And so with this, we will cross multiply. 32 multiplies x. And so we have x equal to 64.4 multiplied by 2 divided by 32. When we multiply this out, it gives 4.025 kilojoule per mole. Hence, the heat required to fuse the sulfur. And the C part says that we should determine the mass of sulfur that will require 32 kilojoule of heat for fusion. Likewise, we will bring in 32 gram equal to 4.4 kilojoule per mole. Hence, if we have 32 kilojoule per mole supplied, how many grams of sulfur will it fuse? We cross multiply and we have it as x equal to 32 multiplied by 32 divided by 64.4 and that gives 15.9 gram of sulfur so here is the mass of sulfur that will be fused as a result of 32 kilojoule per mole of heat Here is the next question which says when 5 grams of liquid water was formed by burning hydrogen gas minus 65 kilojoule of heat was given off calculate the standard heat of formation of water now in this question we have hydrogen gas which was burned which was burned in oxygen to produce liquid water so the first thing we need to do is to have our equation balanced and that could be done by having half over here so this is gas here we have gas 
and we have liquid. And we're told that we should find the standard enthalpy of formation of water. We were provided with the fact that 5 gram of liquid water was formed as a result of minus 65 kilojoule of heat. We have to calculate the standard heat of formation of water. And when we are dealing with standard heat of formation, we will be relating it with the relative molecular mass of water. Now, the relative molecular mass of water equal to hydrogen we have it as 1 times 2 plus 16. Alright? So we have 2 plus 16 and that is 18 gram. And this 18 gram is equal to 1 mole. Hence, for 18 gram of water, how many, what is the kilojoule of heat that will be required to form it? We cross multiply and we we'll have it at 5x equal to minus 65 times 18. Hence, x equal to minus 65 multiplied by 18 divided by 5. And this gives minus 234 kilojoule. Now, it is now per mole. Hence, this is the standard of formation of water. And it is negative meaning that it is an exothermic reaction. Here's the next question. It says the heat of solution of ammonium trioxonitrate 5 solution is plus 25 kilojoule per mole. Calculate the heat quantity absorbed when A, 2 moles, B, 5 grams of ammonium trioxonitrate 5 solid is dissolved with a large volume of water. Now in this, we are dealing with standard heat of solution. First, we need to have our equation. We have ammonium trioxonitrate 5, which is NH4NO3. That is ammonium trioxonitrate 5, which was solid, became NH4NO3. And that is in aqueous form. And we're told that the standard heat of solution is plus 25 kilojoule per mole. Now from here, we have that one mole of ammonium trioxonitrate 5 is equal to 25 kilojoule per mole. Hence, if you have two moles of this, how many kilojoules per mole are we going to have? So we have it that we cross multiply that is x multiplied by 1 which is x equal to 2 times 25 kilojoule per mole. And that will produce 50 kilojoule per mole as the heat necessary for that. Then when we have 5 gram of ammonium trioxonitrate 5, now we need to relate the mass with the amount of heat. NH4, looking for the relative molecular mass. Nitrogen 14, hydrogen 1 times 4, plus nitrogen which is 14, plus 3 times 16. When we add all this together, we will have 80 gram per mole. Meaning that 80 gram per mole of NH4NO3 equal to 25 kilojoule per mole. That is the standard. Hence, if you have 5 gram of NH4NO3, what is the quantity of heat that will be used to produce that. And so we have, we cross multiply that x multiplies 80. That's 80x equal to 5 times 25. So x equal to 5 times 25 over 80. And that gives plus 1.56 kilojoules. Hence, this is the quantity of heat that will be absorbed in order to have 5 gram. This next question says, minus 57.4 kilojoule of heat was given off when one mole of hydrogen ion of a strong acid neutralizes one mole of an hydroxyl ion of a strong base. Calculate the heat evolved when A, two moles of hydrogen ion, B, 0 0.5 mole of hydrogen ion react with excess alkaline in dilute solutions and c calculate the number of moles of hydrogen ion that would be produced by the liberation of 
minus 5.74 kilojoule. Now for us to solve this, first we need to have our equation. From a strong acid, we have H plus. And from a strong base, we have OH minus. And this was neutralized and we have water. Here we have aqueous, we have aqueous and we have liquid. We are given that the standard heat of neutralization in this reaction is minus 57.4 kilojoule per mole. And from this reaction, we have that one mole of hydrogen ion neutralizes one mole of OH minus. And that is equal to minus 57.4 kilojoule per mole. Now, all these are one mole. What if we have two moles of H plus? What is the amount of heat that will be needed? Hence, we we'll multiply minus 57.4 by 2. And that will produce minus 114.8 kilojoule per mole of heat, which will be liberated. So this is the first part. The second part, we are told that if we have 0.5 mole of H plus, which we add. So if you have one mole of H plus, which needs minus 57.4 kilojoule per mole. What if we have 0.5 mole? What is the quantity of heat we need? And so we'll multiply this and we have that X equal to 0 mul 0 0.5 multiplied by minus 57.4. And that produces minus 28.7 kilojoule of heat, which will be liberated. Then the C part, we are told that we should calculate the number of moles of hydrogen ion that will be produced by the liberation of minus 5.74. Now, according to standard, we have that one mole will be produced by the liberation of minus 57.4 kilojoule per mole. Hence, how many moles will you have by having 5 points? How many moles are we going to have by liberating minus 5.74 kilojoules? All we need to do is also cross multiply. X multiplies, which is X times minus 57.4 equal to minus 5.74. Hence, X equal to minus 5.74 divided by minus 57.4. The minus cancels out and we'll have. 0.1 mole of hydrogen ion hence that is the answer all right so here comes the next question 22 grams of ethane is burnt the heat liberated raises the temperature of 50 grams of water from 35 degrees celsius to 42.5 degrees celsius what is the heat of combustion of ethane given that the specific heat capacity of water is 4.2 joules per gram per degree celsius all right so in this question we are told that some heat was liberated when two grams of ethane was burnt and this heat increased the temperature of 50 grams of water from 35 degrees celsius to 45.5 degrees celsius so what we need to do first is to find the quantity of heat that changed the temperature of water from 35 degrees celsius to 45 degrees celsius now we have that the mass of water equal to 50 gram and we have a change in temperature which is t2 minus t1 the final temperature here was 45.5 degrees celsius minus 35 degrees celsius and that gives us 10.5 degrees celsius hence the quantity of heat equal to mc change in temperature our mass here is 50 the specific heat capacity is 4.2 which has a unit of joules per gram per degree celsius and so because of that we are not changing this 50 gram into kilogram because this also was given in gram and then we have our temperature we have our temperature change which is 10.5 and so when we multiply this out, we will have 3,255 joules. And because we know that heat was liberated, so because we have that the, the heat was liberated, and in this case, the heat of the reactant is greater than the heat of the product, 
we have it as negative. Next, we have a molar mass of ethane. Ethane is C2H6. The molar mass of ethane, carbon is 12 times 2 plus hydrogen is 6 times 1. And so this is 24 plus 6 and that is 30 gram per mole. From the question, this was the heat that was liberated from 2 grams of ethane. So we have that 2 grams of ethane liberated minus 3 to 5, 5 joules of heat. Hence, 30 grams of ethane will liberate how many joules of heat? We'll cross multiply it and have 2 multiplied by x equal to 30 multiplied by minus 3 to 5, 5. Hence, x equal to 30 times minus 3 to 5, 5 over 2. And this will give minus 4, 8, 8, 2, 5 joules, which is equal to, which is the same as minus 48.825 kilojoule per mole. Since we are dealing with one mole, you know, 30 gram of ethane is for one mole of ethane. When 100 cm cubed of one molar sodium hydroxide solution at 15 degrees Celsius was added to 100 cm cubed of one molar hydrochloric acid solution at 15 degrees Celsius, the temperature of neutralization rose to 21.8 degrees Celsius. Calculate the standard heat of neutralization. Given that the specific heat capacity is 4.2 kJ per gram per degree Celsius. Alright, so in this question, we have a neutralization reaction between sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid, which produces the salt and water, all in aqueous form except water. Alright, so with this, we were told that when the two of them were added, that's the two volumes, that is 100 cm cube of sodium hydroxide and 100 cm cube of hydrochloric acid. The temperature rose from 15 to 21. Hence, the total volume we are dealing with here equal to 100 cm cubed for sodium hydroxide and 100 cm cubed for hydrochloric acid, and that is 200 cm cubed. There's a point of reference between volume and mass, which is that 1 cm cubed is equal to 1 gram. Hence, if you have 200 cm cubed we are having 200 gram of the solution now we have that there is a temperature change which is t2 minus t1 the final temperature is t2 and that is 21.8 minus the initial temperature which is 15 and this gives 6.8 degrees celsius next we need to get the quantity of heat which was liberated and that is mc change in temperature our mass is 200 gram which is for the solution multiplied by the specific its capacity that is 4.2 multiplied by the change in temperature which is 6.8 and that produces 5712 joules we have a negative there because heat was liberated and this is an exothermic reaction had it been if it was absorbed we will be having it as a positive. Now, this was the heat which was liberated. In this reaction, we are to calculate the standard heat of neutralization. Now, it is important to note that from this reaction, one mole reacts with one mole to give one mole of NaCl and one mole of water. But according to the statement in this reaction, it was not the entire one mole which reacted. We are told we have 100 cm cubed from the 1000 cm cubed of sodium hydroxide. And so we need to know how many moles are present in 100 cm cubed. So for the sodium hydroxide, knowing that we are giving one molar, this means one mole in 1000 cm cubed of the solution. Hence, in 100 cm cubed, how many moles will we have? Hence, x equal to 
when we cross multiply this we have 100 divided by 1000 and that is 0.1 mole and likewise for hydrochloric acid we are giving 1 molar which is 1 mole in 1000 cm cubed 100 cm cubed will contain how many moles mole that's x equal to 100 divided by 1000 and that is also 0 0.1 mole we have that 0 0.1 mole reacted with 0 0.1 mole to liberate minus 5712 joules we have that 0 0.1 mole of NaOH and 0 0.1 mole of HCl gave us five give us minus five seven one two joules hence one mole of both of them will require how many joules so one mole of NaOH and hydrochloric acid when they react what is the quantity of heat that will be liberated and so for us to get that done all we need to do is we multiply x by this that's 0.1 x equal to 1 multiplies the stars minus 5712 joules x equal to minus 5712 divided by 0.1 and that will produce minus 57120 joule per mole of heat so that is the answer calculate the standard enthalpy of formation of gaseous butane given that the heat of formation of water and gaseous carbon 4 oxide are 285 kJ and 393 kilojoules respectively and the heat of combustion of gaseous butane is 2874 kilojoule all exothermic here we have that we should calculate the standard enthalpy of formation of butane and I were told that the heat of formation of water and CO2 were this, this. So, in formation of CO2, we have carbon plus oxygen, which gives us CO2. And we're told that the standard heat of formation of that is minus 393 kilojoule per mole. We have it as minus because it is exothermic reaction. And for water, we have that hydrogen gas reacts with water to produce H2O. Alright, so for water, we are given that the heat of formation of water is minus 285 kilojoules. So that's minus 285 kilojoules per mole. And then, we are told that the heat of combustion of gaseous butane. So we have butane, which was burnt, that is CH4, H10 plus oxygen to produce CO2 plus water. And we're given the heat of combustion as minus 2874. That's minus 2874 kilojoule per mole. We need to balance this equation. We have 4 for hydro for carbon here. So we can place 4 here. And we have 10 for hydrogen. So if we place 5 over here, so we have we place 5 here for hydrogen. Hence hydrogen is now 10 atoms here, and then we have 10 atoms here. It is balanced. Then for carbon, we have 4 and 4, which is balanced. Then for oxygen, we have 4 times 2, 8. 8 plus 5 for oxygen, that is 13. So we have 13 here and we have just 2 over here. To balance it out, we could place a fraction of 13 over 2. So when we multiply this out, we have 13 of oxygen present here. We have that standard enthalpy change equal to standard enthalpy change of products minus standard enthalpy change of reactants where we will consider this particular equation because that is the part of the combustion which we are interested in where the products are CO2 and water and the reactants are butane and oxygen the standard enthalpy change is minus 2874 so we we'll place there as that minus 2874 equal to for the product we have the two of them now, for the formation of CO2, here is the standard enthalpy change, which is minus 393. And over here, we have 4 moles of it, so we multiply it by 4. Plus, still on the product side, we have water. 
the enthalpy change of water is minus 285 and we have 5 moles of it so we multiply it by 5 then minus for the products for the products we have CH for H10 that is butane and that is what we are after so we represent it as X that is unknown plus that of water we have 13 over 2 times for water for water we do not have the standard enthalpy of formation because it is readily available so it was easily found to to bond the butane and to produce this and so because of that we will have it as zero now we multiply this out we have minus 2874 equal to we multiply 4 by minus 393 and that produces minus 1572 minus 1572 then plus times minus is a minus and 285 times 5 would give us 1425 all right then minus this is 13 over 2 times 0 that's 0 then x minus x so we have minus 2874 equals minus 1572 minus 1425 and that would give minus 2997 so minus 2997 minus x bringing this over here we have x equal to minus 2997 plus 2874 and that will give minus 123 minus 123 kilojoule per mole hence the standard enthalpy of formation of the gaseous butane which is C4H10 is equal to minus 123 kilojoule per mole and that is the answer